Hello, I'm Christina with The Turned Leg. I love to salvage, repurpose, and create and help others to do the same. Today is an exciting day. It is booth redecorating day. Everyone that owns their own booth at an antique mall or a craft mall probably has their own idea of how they want to decorate it or how they want to work it. My booth, I like to give it a big overhaul for every season. So you want to see how I do it? Come along, I'll show you all my tips and tricks and the final big reveal at the end. Here is the before shot of my booth. My booth was decorated all for Christmas. To see what it looked like in its entirety, I will put a link to my Christmas booth tour right here. I'm a really visual person, so when I plan out my new booth display, I first grab a legal pad and I make a list of all of the pieces of furniture that are currently in my booth and the pieces that I want to add to my booth. The next thing I do is I head over to Pinterest. I have a board on my Pinterest page that's called Display Ideas, and it has lots of good ideas that I've been saving over the years. Usually if I spend a little bit time scrolling through, I will find some good inspiration for my next booth design. The next thing I do is I get another sheet of paper and I start to sketch out my furniture groupings on my legal pad. They are not drawn to size and sometimes not everything I want will fit as you'll see in this video coming up. But it gives me a rough idea of where everything is going and what will fit together. Then I pack up whatever I might need to take to the booth and get working. In this case, I needed a lot of empty boxes to take down all of those Christmas items. The first step is to get rid of Christmas and luckily my mom was able to come along and help me. An extra set of hands is always welcome on days when we're doing a booth redesign. Thank goodness for time-lapse photography. Here are just a few of the items all packed up and ready to go. I'm taking these items home to store them for next year. The next step is to move out the furniture and in a small booth space there's actually an art to doing it. You want to make sure as you're moving things out that you're not blocking yourself in for other pieces. That's another reason why a plan is extremely important. So now I'm working on the front section which is mostly pastels. I had a plan for this section but the furniture pieces were not drawn to scale and it really was tricky to get everything just the way I wanted. Sometimes the best plan of attack is to just keep moving the pieces around until you find what works for you. Notice throughout this video that we are adding felt pads to the bottom of many of the pieces that are stacking on top of furniture just to protect the furniture below. Then we turned our attention to the back of the booth. I like to set up my booth in sections, it just makes it easier for me. I am done with the booth makeover and it took almost an entire day. I was at Plaza Antiques from about 10 o'clock until about closing time, right around 5.30 or 6. Luckily, I did have a design and that helped me save a lot of time because in years past when I've been doing this, it's taken three days to sometimes take down Christmas and set up the new booth. The booth is done and I'm going to take you on a tour through all of the sections in the booth. I think it's really important when you own an antique booth that you have little sections and that it's not just one big space. By doing this, you can kind of tell a story and you can kind of decorate with a theme. The first section we're gonna look at over here, my mom was calling it the Royal Empire theme, kind of like Asian and a little bit of English all put together. And so we have some beautiful prints up there to set the tone. You're also going to notice that I decorate kind of by color grouping. That is one trick that I've really liked to use over the years. In this grouping, you're going to see a lot of darker colors and wood tones. And of course, a little bit of sparkle. Pretty much the whole focus of this section was inspired by this beautiful steamer trunk that I found out picking. 
I also have in this booth, and it looks like people have been looking through it, but old photos. Having something in your booth that people can look through, they really enjoy it. And these old photos range from 25 cents and up, and people are always looking through them, and it's amazing how many I actually do sell to. Also, because New Year's is right around the corner, we have a lot of bar accessories. People really like to celebrate for New Year's and have some cool little vintage treasures and treats. Some great glasses here that I really like. Once again, they have the black and the gold theme to it. These shot glasses, they also have a little gold rim. Real cute. Back in the back is the humidor that I painted a while back. It has a beautiful copper inside. And up high, we carry the theme all the way up. It's really important when you're designing your booth space to have a high point. Some people call this the triangle or the pyramid. I'm just learning it, so comment below, let me know how I'm doing. But that way your eye doesn't stay in one place, it kind of travels. I still have a lot to learn, and a lot of times my pyramids really depend upon what pieces I have, since I do vintage and I'm not a wholesale dealer. Moving over here, we have our sweet little vintage wicker rocker. Even though it's a summer piece, because I used a darker pillow and the color blocking books, it makes it look like it fits in this space. We've got our clock chiming just for you. Another tip that I like to use in my booth is grouping like objects. All of my dogs are in one spot, and I think that's really helpful for people who are searching because if they like dogs, they'll find them. They don't have to hunt all over the booth for them. Show you a little bit more. Over here, we have a beautiful china cabinet. It once again has the metallic kind of theme, so it's nearby the display. And we've got another hand-painted piece down here. Across the back of my booth, we have this beautiful credenza that's hand-painted. Sideboard, buffet, my mom and I were arguing over names. What do you call these pieces? I call them sideboards. I think my mom prefers buffet. And back here, I don't know if you can notice, even though these are prints, they are all from the same artist, so I like to hang them all together. And most of them are winter scenes. And of course, we have my hand stenciled signs. I love to do signs on salvage wood. Over here, we have a really special mirror. It's painted in boho blue. It also has kissing booth and a little bit of golden ticket. This mirror was painted at the same time as one of my favorite bedroom sets that I painted. I painted it right alongside, so I'd always remember the bedroom set I created. It has the same blending technique I used. I've since then painted quite a few other pieces in similar ways, so I've decided it's time for the piece to have a new home. As we round the corner, I always like vintage kitchen. And although this is not as kitcheny as I normally have, because there's no kitchen table set up, I found a way to make a bookcase and a dresser work for my display. So we have vintage cookbooks. We'll take you in and show you some of the items. I also am grouping, once again, like objects together. There are the salt and pepper shakers. Oh, I forgot to show you across the back here. Did you notice all the trays? It's really important if you're starting a new booth. It helps a lot if you're grouping items. If you're not sure where to put stuff, if you try to keep it together, helps a lot. Another thing I'm kind of obsessed with is cruel work. Here's more kitchen. Now in this bookcase, mostly are my vintage cookbooks. I kind of have a bad habit. So as you'll notice, there's even more than one of some of them. I love all of the old recipes found in these books. And they're also so great on the shelves too. And down at the bottom, we have vintage thermoses with my snow sign to remind people it's gonna be cold. 
You might need a thermos, especially if you're going sledding. It's also important that you're not just lining your furniture on the wall and that you have little nooks along the way while people are walking. One of the problems while we were setting up this booth, I'm sure you saw, was stacking this section. This section was one of the hardest parts. And that's because, yes, there's a ton of furniture here. And although it all fit with color, it was hard to fit the sizes and make it look good. We have this beautiful chest with IOD transfers. And we have this as a cedar chest down below, also with different IOD transfers. Worked out well for these two to stack on top of each other. And also the height raised up the yellow chest, so I think more people will be able to see it. Height is so important when you have an antique booth. If you notice, just as I pan through, there are objects at all different heights. So while you're looking, your eye is gonna dart around, and that's a good thing. You don't want people to be able to see everything all at once. Down here, we have vintage suitcases blended finished dresser and then as you go up we have lots more to look at over in this corner we have some more similar objects these are all items of gold frames once again i like to keep them all grouped together so that people will notice some more i think collections get a lot more attention than just the solitary object and we'll walk back a little bit further. Here we've got a nice little setup. Notice different heights. That's really important too. You shouldn't just set items right on tabletops. Wherever you can work in different heights, it really helps. Even over here, I have a little cake server that has some objects. If they were just sitting right on the dresser, you really wouldn't notice them as much. And then on the side here, we have my bookcase with a whole bunch of little cubbies. Um, I have to get more objects in here. <laughs> I was getting tired when I was redoing the booth, so I haven't done this as nicely as I need to, but usually I spend a lot of time in each cubby and try to get them color coordinated or have a common theme. Right now, there's a bunch of clear glassware and some things that still need to be arranged. If you own a booth, the work is never done. As we round the corner, this is my paint area. I have Sweet Pickens milk paint and my DIY paint. And then along this aisle, I'm privileged enough to have all this space for the pieces that don't fit in my booth. I try to keep these to kind of have a same theme. So the pieces that are out here right now are pretty much neutrals and white. And I think it looks better when the pieces kind of match in the area. And then down here is the color. So it's getting near the paint booths and all the color is happening. I think that really makes the paint booth pop too. So let's, I also worked on, and I know you didn't see it very much, but the front of my project shop booth also got a redesign. I think it is so important as an antique dealer, or if you're in a booth, vintage and found objects to change things up. I always seem to sell more items once I move things around. It's really amazing how just by moving some stuff around, everybody thinks it's all new again. And we have the DIY candle company candles, and these are right at eye level. And then down below we have some suitcases, in the project shop booth over on the side here this doesn't change much this is the salvage area it's really the best location so that the windows and don't get damaged or hurt anyone else and i have some really good pipes down here that i'm using to separate i don't know if you can see these are pipes from the plumbing section that you can find i put these in to help kind of secure and separate out so that the items don't fall. It was an easy fix. I saw it done at another salvage store and I thought it was brilliant. So that's how I hold up all those heavy windows and I don't have to worry about anyone getting injured. 
I also store my vintage screens behind that fence there that I made, which is right by the windows, so they don't fall out. Here are my Jamie Ray vintage stencils. And I added down here a whole bunch of little projects, wooden projects that people could grab and work with their stencils. I try to encourage people in my project shop booth to start new projects and I try to have everything kind of grouped together. I did not change this back wall too much. I did remove the Christmas. I left the snowflakes on that flower bucket, but across the top, I took down the greenery so I did a little sprucing. I don't always change the whole project shop booth at one time because a lot of this booth people come to to work on their projects and they need to know where stuff is. I did add some vintage maps to my back wall. And over here, I moved things around a lot. I got rid of some of the crates. I moved them to the front. But a lot of the same items are still in this area. Just picked up a little bit and moved around and shuffled. So I'll take you back around the corner, let you look at the section one more time. So it doesn't probably look like it, but this is what one whole day's work gets you. You get a whole new look and hopefully it will be inspiring people to come and get inspired, maybe find some great items for their house too. So what do you think of the booth makeover? Comment down below. If you enjoyed seeing this video and would like to learn more about owning an antique booth and some tips and tricks, please comment below and let me know and I'll be happy to make some future videos about it. If you enjoyed this video, don't forget to give it a thumbs up and subscribe. It helps me to grow my channel and continue to help people to salvage, repurpose, and create.